YouTube Lenny Slide, WorldWarriorTraining.com. Welcome to another video. Uh, today's video, we're going to be doing Katadori Sunkyo, okay, with a little twist at the end of the video. So, um, we're going to be focusing on Kemi, we're going to be focusing on the actual application of getting into a Sunkyo, which kind of starts off with, uh, with Yubidori. And then, um, we're going to add something to the end of this. So, sit back, relax, stay tuned. I'll be right back. We're going to be cranking on this video. See you in a second. Katadori Sankyo. Um, this starts off with a Yubidori application, to be quite honest with you. Uh, because of the application of the grab, it's kind of hard to get into Sankyo. This is the best way to be able to do it, in my opinion. Because in order to grab somebody, your hand has to be open to grab. So it exposes, it exposes your fingers to where you could actually apply a Yubidori on this. Um, so I have Rod here today with me. Hi. Onigashimasu. So as Rod comes in, attacks. It's a straight, straight line attack right to the shoulder or right to the mune. Okay, right to the lapel. As that happens, you're going to raise this up. Okay, Yubidori isn't this. You can do this and then turn this over into the Sankyo application. You can, but when you do that and it's right here, you're in position to get punched when if he doesn't go down to his knees, come up. If you just go to here and you roll over, you can get punched at that point. So the idea is that when the katadori is coming in, you capture this. Once you capture, a lot of times you're going to get this kind of half sankyo application where your thumb's not going to be applied. It's depending on how, how the person has their hand. If you're able to get into this position, you also have to apply this quick because if he starts closing his thumb, starts closing his fingers, now you have... You're in a bad predicament at that point. You don't want to get caught in that. So the idea is that you want to be able to capture this. Okay, so as he's pushing, you're capturing. This hand comes right underneath the wrist. His wrist lies right there. As this happens, you're rolling this over into Sankyo. Okay, one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want this Ukemi on the street who gives a shit, right? But in the dojo, for the sake of taking care of your partner, as you're applying this, you don't want your uke to keep going because then when it gets applied, the sankyo is amplified by a thousand percent. You just saw how you just started jumping around and I barely applied it. So as this happens, you're moving to the outside. The uke should not continue to go forward. If the uke does continue to go forward and thinks that he's going to get around that and hit, you just slam on the brakes. You just apply. That will stop him dead in his tracks. You can see his response to that. It's not going to be a good one. And the result might be possibly an injury. The body takes a lot of beating. We get hurt every day. The second that you're injured, that changes everything. There's a difference between being hurt and being injured, especially on the mat. Once you're injured, you're done for the day or you're done for a while. Being hurt's a different story. You can work through that type of injury. So as the katadori comes in, you're capturing right away the Sankyo application. From here, there's all kinds of things you can do. A lot of people tend to just drop this down and go for this application. I don't see how that's abruptly going to work. Okay? This is not going to take, don't take the ukemi. This is not going to get somebody to move. You're applying this and dropping down. He can resist. It changes. If you get to this position of sankyo and you apply this abruptly, 
they go right down to the ground. You apply a standing pin, finish them out, turn to where you're facing them and reset. So the application, hi, you okay? Hi. The application of this has to be explosive in a sense to where this happens, Sankyo, bang, right down to the ground, right away. You apply standing pin, lock everything up, apply, allow this to bend. My shin, my calf and shin is actually holding his leg in place or his arm in place to where I can move away from that. Okay, so one more time. So grabbing the Sankyo is important. Timing, everything is about timing, okay? So you have to be able to move this fast, the Sankyo. Then this cutting application, it's like a sword cut. It's not projecting out, it's straight down as you apply. Then you make your adjustment and then you pin and then you move off. Don't ever make, don't ever do this. I see this a lot, okay? You don't want to do this and then start walking back from here. Okay, you always want to be in front of your partner so when he starts to get up, he's almost like in a shiko position. Okay, to where then he stands up, he's right in front of you. If you're moving back, you grab your leg, you don't know what's behind you at this point. Here, you're pinning your peripheral, you can see what's over there. If there's nothing over there, why not move? You know you're safe to move. I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so when I'm pinning, if I start backing away, how do I know somebody's not behind me? trips me up, knocks me down, one of his friends get me, whatever. So you're always scanning as you're doing stuff. So Sankyo, so the Sankyo application, obviously I can see behind him, I'm turning, I can see the application here, I can see what's around me, I apply technique, I drop him down, I'm looking all this way, I'm looking this way to pin, so I know it's safe for me to move this way, but I don't know what's coming up behind here, because within those two seconds, somebody be, can be approaching from the rear and get me in a bear hug chokehold. So I move out of the way at this point and I reset. He gets up into basically shiko position. We stand up, reset, and get technique again. So one more time. So right away, sunkyo, application, fly, and then move. So really easy. A lot of people make this a lot harder than what it is bad ring finger on that hand. So one more time. So that application, okay, it's not one, two, three, four, five. It's all one motion at that point. Apply. You can keep moving with this if you wanted to. Move in other technique if you wanted to. It's about flowing, right? Being able to move. So right away, Sankyo, this is a sword cut. Another thing you gotta watch out for with the uke, if, they, if you apply this really hard, Rod did this to me on the last technique. Basically, he knee dropped right on my fucking foot. Thanks, Rod. Okay, that's another thing of ukemi. Don't ever drop on your partner's foot because when it happens to you, you're not gonna like it. So this is straight down application, apply the pin, you're good to go, okay? So that's pretty much it for Katadori Sankyo. To add to this, okay, as the technique comes in, as the attack comes in, your Sankyo application, apply the Sankyo. Then from there, you can move to the outside and apply Shihonage. He turns his hips, gun roll, and you throw him, okay? So you can take this to a whole nother level at that point. So application of Sankyo, boom. You don't necessarily want to step in front because remember, he has a second hand. At that point, he's punching me in the back of the head. One punch, two punch, three punch. By that time, fourth punt in the back of the head, I don't think I'm gonna be holding his arm unless I'm wearing a football helmet at that point. I'm, I would've got hit four times. So the idea is Sankyo, okay? You're moving to the outside of this. And application. 
application. Let's come back over here. Okay. So, Sunkyo, you're moving this way. Okay. Moving through. So a little quicker. Move it this way. So, sun kill. And you throw it. You can me. You can me. You can me. You need to turn. I felt that you were being thrown like this. You need to turn. Okay, one more time. Sun kill. This point foam right there. Arm. Last one. Sun kill application. Move through. Boom. Strike. We're getting this to the point where the cameraman's not seeing the throw because the fucking cameraman's not moving. One more time. Sun kill. Move. Ready? Turn your hips. Ready? She will not. Okay? Hey. Hey. Okay. Let me give away a little secret real quick. Take a look at that man. He's a 6Q in Aikido. In my dojo, you can wear Hakama once you obtain the rank of 6Q. Because I've carried on that tradition from my original organization. 6Q. Not even in my Aikido. He's my student. I haven't even tested him. Is it okay to say this? Hey. He's a 6Q in somebody else's organization. And it's one of, one of the three food groups in the United States for organizations. Kamada <clears throat> Sensei, um, organization. USAF, he's a 6Q. Break off Kotagaishi, Sumiyotoshi, Shihonage, amongst others, 6Q. So, that should be some motivation for some of you out there that uh, have problems with Ukemi. Take the Ukemi. When you resist on training, okay, now granted, compliance, 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 I get it. You have to learn these kata forms in order to learn how to do technique. Once you understand them and have better application, you can move past that and make techniques harder. But in order to learn them, there has to be a compliance. You know, with the way all the attack is, the way all the application is. Otherwise, you won't have any people to train with because everyone's going to be broken. Okay? Who likes to play with broken toys? I know I sure don't. You know, you want your ukes to be able to get back up and train. So, the ukemi side of it is extremely important that you can take a kemi off of falls. Very, very important. I've already talked about this and I'm probably going to make a separate video just on my understanding and, and how I perceive what a kemi is and how I teach it to my students to where they can progress. But I just wanted to lay that out there and let you guys know that he's a 6Q and it's not even under me. I've made his Aikido a hundred times better from the Ukemi standpoint than what he's actually getting from his own teachers at his other dojo. So, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, share the video, share all of the videos, okay? Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.